I watched that whole Rockefeller uh, enterprise crumble through a lens. You know what I'm saying? I was the fly on the wall. For the people that don't know who you are, introduce them and let them know who you are. Um, Choke No Joe, producer, director, cinematographer, editor of television, film, and video. I started out doing uh, uh, cinematography at the tunnel. Uh, you can talk about that too. Yeah, you know, I started doing that. You know, I got into the whole camera thing when I was doing my modeling and acting thing. Whenever I did jobs, I would bring my camera and shoot behind the scenes. And I went to the tunnel, started doing the tunnel. We shooting that every week with Street Phone TV. Then I became a producer of the show, then producer and director of the show. The first show I produced and directed was Snoop and Dre at the tunnel. Yeah, it was great. a five camera shoot. Uh, from there, I got my own show on Fox and the WB called MC Hip Hop. Did wow. that. Um, sure. From there, you know, I started doing the independent thing on the tunnel. Uh, shows out on VHS before it was DVD. Then, you know, when Remember the DVDs that. came into play and VHS was played out, we released them on DVD, uh, did three volumes, and I went to my fourth one, which was Tony Ford, the best of Jay-Z. Yeah. And then I went to Rockefeller to see if they had any commercials that they, they uh, yeah. wanted to put on the DVD. They ain't sort of work. Um, he, he was impressed that I produced and directed it, manufactured it, manufactured it all by myself. Yeah. He brought me in the Rockefeller. I started doing video productions for Rockefeller. Look, y'all y'all heard now now that Rockefeller said no one to go. You're not a leader. You don't know shit about my culture. Get the fuck out. You don't know shit about Jack. And the clip that we just saw there was um, the day before that. Day you saw there, uh, God bless the dead, Baba Law, Big's brother had got killed. Um, and uh, we was all at a funeral yeah. for Bob, and uh, that's why I think it was probably a little more emotional than normal. Okay. But uh, uh, Gerard, who was the marketing guy at Rockefeller, had informed Dane that night that uh, Def Jam was having a marketing meeting for the Black Album. Wow. You know, so Damon had no idea about this meeting, you know, so he was wondering how could they call a meeting for Rockefeller, or for, pardon me, for a Rockefeller artist without him being privy to what was going on as the CEO. Yeah. Or co-CEO along with Damon Biggs. So um, what happened, you know, Dame told me, you know, your choke, Def Jam called a meeting for the Black Garden, they didn't inform me. Meet me at the office at 9.30, yeah. we are going to bust up in the meeting at 10 o'clock. You know, so me not giving the F, you know, <laughs> I don't care, you know. Yeah. So I met him at the office and, you know, they were having a meeting for the black album. Mm -hmm. So we sat there, we let them get the meeting started and then we bust in, you know, and Dame's like, you know, how you having a meeting for uh, a Rockefeller artist without me knowing about who called the meeting. Yeah. They was all tight lipped, nobody wanted to say Jay did, you know, everybody's like, uh, uh, uh. But you know, you got Jay's manager sitting in there. Wow. You got the whole Def Jam staff in there. As you can see, it was nobody from Rockefeller in there until we came in. And um, you know, Dave lost his cool. And that was kind of the day when he realized that Jay wasn't messing with him no more. Well, just being a fan of music, but you you were there. Mm -hmm. When did you really see, like, wow, I don't think dude is really messing with him like that, because I know Dame hired you, so you had to really, you know, film Dame a lot. Right. Well, the day I know for a fact that Jay and Dane, there was a separation or, you know, a divide in Rockefeller between, it was like Dame and Biggs and Jay was, there was a show called the Give Back Show at uh, the Hammerstein Ballroom. It was a Jay-Z okay. concert. Dane called me up and said, y'all want you to come film this concert. And yeah. it was the first time that I was really filming Jay like that because Jay don't really like the camera. So, you know, I went to go shoot the show. You know, I'm shooting the concert. And me, when I'm filming, I'm in the pit. I'm on the speakers. I'm in standing on people's heads. Yeah. You know, whatever I got to do to get the best shot, that's what I do. And I see Jay like, yo, who, who's this dude taping? Mm -hmm. So he went to, you know, ta 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 went to Jet Dane. Like, yo, what's going on? Who's this dude taping? Dane like, yo, he worked for Rockefeller. At the time, I was born, I was staff, I had the universal badge, everything. 
you yeah. know. So what happened was Jay told Tata, don't, don't get the tape. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the concert, um, first they, you know, they try to do the, the old trick, you know what I'm saying, throw the drink to cause, a, you know, hysteria amongst people. But I'm from Eden Wall Projects. I know when niggas is forming. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know when niggas is about to get it popping. So when I peed that, you know, you know, I was just ready for it. So when a Jay dipped out, so he wouldn't be there. You know what I'm saying? At that time, they, Jay was on probation for the unstabbing. Yeah. So he couldn't be there or he, you know, he was gonna get himself in trouble. You know, so Jay and them dipped out. So as uh, me and Dane, once was, everybody's was playing out, me and Dane was leaving. Dane walked out before me. As Dane, as I went out to walk behind Dane, Tata jumps in front of him. You know, he jumps in front of the door, he pardoned me. And yeah. I could easily be like, yo, Dane, like, you know, get this nigga. But I was like, nigga, what the fuck you gonna do? You know what I'm saying? And he was like, yo, yo, get him, get him. He told the boys, get him. And it was like five of them, you know, dudes jump me or whatever to get the camera. You know, it was a lot of swinging going on. Then this dude tried to kick the camera out of my hand and I moved the camera and his foot caught me in my chip, fractured my jaw, Yeah. you know. So I was in the hospital, in Harlem Hospital for a while. You know, at first I didn't know my jaw was broke. I went out, went and tried to get a burger. Still had the camera? <laughs> nah, nah. The camera fell. Tata snatched the camera, ran out, yeah. and then they all dipped out with him. And then Darian, Darian died. She came over there. Yo, what y'all doing? He with us. He worked with us. Blah 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 blah. In the hospital for you know a few days, or whatever. You know, I'm calling Dane. He ain't picking up. Usually when I call him, I get a pickup first, second ring. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when he wasn't calling me back, I knew something was funny. Uh -huh. So I went down, you know, after I got out of the hospital, face all swole up, looking like dude from Mass. You know, went down to the um, Chelsea Piers, he was doing a photo shoot there. I went there with a couple of people from Eden Wall. You know, <laughs> you know, you know we had those things, you know, and we get on the elevator, and as soon as we get on the elevator, the door opened up. Dame was there with his wife, and you know, not his wife, Rachel Roy, she was his girlfriend at the time before they got married. Elevator door open, you know, he seems like, oh shit. He's like, yeah, come here, I need to talk to you. Yeah. You know, go talk to him. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is up with my face? What happened? Yo, it's Jay. This down there. I said, look, man, I'm not gonna sue you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But something gotta get, you know. Yeah. So he like, yo, Jay gonna take care of that. I'm gonna talk to Jay, whatever. Make a long story short, Dame, I had an artist named Denim. Dame said, yo, I'm gonna sign up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna sign her. That's gonna compensate you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And Jay hit me off with some paper. I ain't gonna say how much it was. Yeah. And you know I let it ride because you know they they took care of me. You know what I? You know what I know now. I should have. I I would have to have press charges to get that big bread. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you know you gotta keep the cash cow on the street so we all can eat. You know yeah. Jay yeah. was the cash cow. If all the press charges. Him on being on probation, he the guy locked up. Rockefeller would have ended way back then. It's like what you capture. It seems like the destruction of Rockefeller. When I like when you capture the Young Guns and Emilio Sparks and um, how they was like, yo, we can't even get no clothes. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, yo, you know. That, that was that, that was like the, the the beginning of the end. Like I said, like when when that incident happened after Hammerstein, when I came back to the office. Jim Jones seen me and he was like, yo, what happened? You know what I'm saying? I told him what happened. He was like, get your paper. He was the one that told me to get your paper because he knew what was going on. And when he said that, I kind of put it together. Then I was like looking at it and I, that's when I knew, oh, these niggas ain't even fucking with each other no more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bar my language. But, um. Now you curse on it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so, you know, that, that right there showed me, you know, oh, there's a separation here. And then at that point, I was working at Rockefeller for four years. Jay Z never came to the office once. Wow. Now four years. So from the Blueprint Two, all the way up to the Black Album, he, he never, never came in the office. Well, I used to see him go see Leo on them, but he would never come into the Rockefeller office. What is your relationship now? Are there hard feelings? Not with me. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't have no hard feelings with me and Dane fell out at at Rock Radio. You know, he was running off at the mouth. You know how he can get with the mouth. And 
at that point, I was just tired of his fucking mouth. You know what I'm saying? Me and him was going to have a physical fight. You know, dudes broke it up. And he's like, yo, I ain't going to hit him because he's going to sue. And I'm like, I ain't sued y'all before. Like, you know, so, like, yeah. what make you think I'm going to sue you? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it was just like, I just I just left that day and I never went back because I just couldn't take this dude's mouth no more. Like, he yeah. talk, me and dudes the same age. Like, you're not going to be talking down on me because you got more paper than me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're going to respect me like I respect you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I left, you know, and dudes like, yo, why you leave us Rockefeller? You on top of the world. Da, 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 da. I'm like, fuck that. I'm not taking this dude's mouth no more. Yeah. And, you know, a few months later, I was producing Rap City. So I was good. So what's the Jew that will be the next one, like, to give a sneak peek that? Part nine. Well, I, right now I got the, the Damon Beans thing. Like, a lot of people don't know Beans been, Beans got a lot of money stole from him. Like, right now, Dame's got him for at least 11 million. Mm, that's a lot you know of what I'm saying? So you seeing him talking about, yo, I'm going to court for Beans, da 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 but he was stealing money from him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm right. saying? So that's a jewel in itself. Cause you looking at it like yo, Dave's a stand up dude. Yeah, you know, in that aspect of going to court <laughs> yeah. and saying, yo, judge, yeah, you know, you know, I, I vouch for him so he don't have to go to jail. That's G. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But at the same time, you just got a check for three hundred and fifty thousand and you got somebody to write it in his name, you cashed it, and now he got the IRS on his back. Outside of um, the whole leaking episode, is what else have you been working on? That's just gonna be expected. I mean, uh, I'm doing a tunnel documentary, you know, I had to, you know, put that on pause for a minute because Flex was hating, you know, <laughs> he wanted 100% control of it, he don't want me to put this DJ in it, he don't want to put this person in it, like, yeah, motherfucker, if they was there, they was there, why are you trying to ask dudes out of history, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, like Johnny Walker Red, he don't want him in it, you know what I'm saying, like, why? Like, he was there. He was there. You know what I'm saying? Cool. And then you want 100% control of what? You didn't buy a tape. You didn't buy a camera. You didn't give me a token <laughs> to get on the train. Yeah, you, yeah. yeah we did tokens back then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you didn't believe in us. We was clowns. We was speeding. Oh, here y'all go with the camera again. He didn't see what we saw. Yeah. But now, I go and get a deal with BET. He don't want to do it with BET. He want to go do it with VH1. Cool. I ain't got the plug with VH1. You got it? Let's do it. But now you want 100% control, and now you want to start taking dudes out of it. I'm not doing that. What was so, the craziest, craziest performance you've seen there? Yeah, man, so many. <laughs> like, it could, it could be Nori and Capone, dude threw a drink on Nori, um, Capone's fur. He jumped in the crowd, whipped his ass. It could be Dre and Snoop. They had the whole West Coast with them. Everybody was there, RBX. Daz, Superfly, Exhibit, everybody except for Corrupt, because he had the beef with uh, DMX at the time over Foxy or whatever. Um, <laughs> who else? Uh, it's a box like crazy. Left and Red, Left always jumping in the crowd, jumping on people's heads. Mm -hmm. Like, I know Jay, Jay had a lot of classic performances there. Nas, oh, Bravehearts, when somebody threw a Moet bottle and crashed, a horse loud. in the head and, oh. while he was performing. It ain't really catch him in the head, but he like, plew, and just kept going. He was so big. So you got the tunnel coming up. What else? I uh, got the tunnel thing. Um, well, I'm getting ready to do uh, the B series on Fuse TV with um, QD3, Quincy Jones' son. Wow. So we're getting ready to do that. Um, I got uh, my, my model documentary that I shot in Jamaica and Turks and Caicos called So You Think You're a Model. Okay. Um, what else? Oh, man. Joe, you've been doing everything, man. You can't keep yeah. up. What about the music? The music now. Yeah, you know, I do my music thing too. I don't, I don't do the music. I do the music for me. Okay. I mean, I'm nice with it, yeah. but I just do it for me because I've been doing it so long. But okay. I'm not doing it to, you know, make the money from it. That's yeah. just my hobby. That's what I do. You get making money off that film, though. Yeah, the TV, <laughs> yeah. film, video. Stop that's artists. my passion. Nah, nah. Well, I'm getting ready to manage Tony Yeo. Yeo will be the manager. Okay, so shout out to Yeo. Yeah, shout out to Yeo. And we working that out right now. That's what's up. So you got any shout outs? And oh, and me and Benny Siegel is doing Life After Rockefeller.